Welcome to the West Melford Presbyterian Church. It is Sunday, November 29, year 2020, First Advent Worship. Let me read a scripture reading for you. It's from Psalm 80, verse 1. Restores, restore us, O God. Let your face shine and save us. It is our confession that through this worship, God will shine his faith upon us and he will save us and he will restore us. Let us worship God. Let us pray. O oh God, restore us. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Save us from the traps of our own creation. From fear that blocks the way of love. From worry that blocks the way of joy. From isolation that blocks the way of relationship. From structural injustice that keeps the world bound. In this time of worship, Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us, Lord, and pour your forgiveness upon us, Lord, until the stars fall from heaven and we will live as your children and we will transform to be your children, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today, we have a children's sermon. And children, come forward and pay attention. Let me invite Miss Kathy Ennery. Hi, friends. Do you hear the alarm? It's time to get up. Wake up, sleepyheads. Rise and shine. You don't want to spend your whole day in bed. It's the first Sunday in Advent. We need to be awake. We need to be ready. We don't want to miss anything about the celebration of baby Jesus. We don't want to miss anything about the teachings of Jesus. And we don't want to miss when Jesus returns to us. <gasps> what if you slept through Christmas? What if you missed decorating your tree? Missed all that family time? Missed Oh, all that yummy food. Miss being in the Sunday school pageant when we tell everybody about the birth of baby Jesus. What if you slept through giving gifts to people? And what if you slept through getting gifts from others? That would not be good. Wake up. We need to be awake when Jesus returns. The Bible tells us if he comes suddenly, do not let you do not let him find you sleeping. Wake up to make sure we're awake when Jesus returns. All we need to do is spread the love of Jesus to everyone. Then we'll be ready. Then we'll be awake. That's what the first Sunday in Advent is all about. Be awake. Be ready. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the joy of Jesus' birth. We ask for your help so that we are ready when Jesus comes again. Amen. Be awake. Be ready. Thank you, friends. See you soon. Bye. Today's scripture reading is from Gospel according to Mark, chapter 13, verse 24 through 37. Now, listen to the word of our Lord. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then, they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then 
he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gate. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or cockcrow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly and what i say to you i say to all keep awake this is word of our lord thanks be to god Have you ever been waiting for someone so long time? Once you get to see them, what was your response? Oh, before you see her or him, and how do you feel? You have butterflies and you have anticipation. And the time is not ticking. You cannot wait to see that person. You know why? Because you really, really love that person. So you automatically learn to wait. Advent is the season of waiting, a time to be marked by urgent anticipation by a longing for the fulfillment of what has been promised by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. In the first Advent Gospel reading, today's Gospel reading Mark, and Jesus called the disciples to keep awake, alert, on the watch. Why do we need to keep awake and wait? Because something is going to happen. And Jesus drew our attention and anticipation of the imp impending event. It goes like this. In those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Wait a minute. The something for which we wait is not the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Is it not the manger or a overcrowded inn? Or the shepherds in search of the baby wrapped in the swaddling cloth? Is it not baking the Gingerbread man in your oven and that aroma coming out? And covering of gift with a shiny reflective, the red, green, and silver 
gift wrap paper? Or is it not? We expect to hear at the time of the year? Or perhaps it is not what we want to hear? In Mark chapter 13, Jesus called the disciples to pay attention. Watch for deception. Watch out for yourselves. Watch during the difficult days ahead. In the face of the environmental and political and social and cosmic calamity. So stay awake. That's what our Lord Jesus has to disciple to do. Why? Because he foretold his disciple that the temple, the temple will be destroyed. The center of the religious life will surely be destroyed. The question is what happened and when the temple is destroyed. When you read this scripture reading, and for some Christians have a question like this, the closing of the houses of worship across the United States and the world during this COVID-19 pandemic felt like temple destruction. We've been closed our sanctuary for two weeks now, and we feel like we are in destruction. Church building remains intact, but the rituals and our religious rhythms and religious habits and patterns were significantly changed. In a matter of days, the COVID-19 pandemic caused us to close church premises and reconvene in virtual sanctuaries. Across traditions, we reimagined and envisioned what it means to live without the physical assembly in the physical space. The disruption that was expected to be for a few weeks or a month has stretched into the eight month now and something was lost all of a sudden demolished by the vir virus was it normal is it it give you comfort does it give you security or the does it give you a perception In the midst of this pandemic, we are called to wait and watch and work in the season of Advent. Why do we need to wait? Why? The Son of Man comes with the power and glory, and Jesus will send angels to gather the chosen one. The Jesus gives assurance that he is here at the very gates. He is here with us. He promises that he will come again and as he comes to us first, the promise will not be extinguished, but will endure until all is accomplished. Therefore, this hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. In this time, we are waiting. Waiting, yes, of course, we open the churches, church buildings, and we have a physical assembly. But more than that, we are waiting that when we gather together, whether we are physically get together or virtually get together, 
God pour out His love upon us. God pour out His mercy upon us. God pour out His blessing upon us so that we will be actually His sanctuary. That's what we are waiting. That's what is promised by today's scripture reading. Is it worth waiting? Yes, it is. Why? Like I said before, it is promise of Jesus that Jesus gave us assurance that He is near at the very gate. His promise is that He will come again as He came to us first. And these are the promise through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. We often think, since the time is unknown, then when does He come? He promised so long ago. It was 2020 years ago. And still it did not happen. Maybe it could be it could be happening like hundred years or thousands or millions of years from now. What does today's scripture say? Mark drew a very different conclusion than us. Since the timing is unknown, it could be today, it could be now, it could be a moment later. So maybe this evening, or at midnight, or when draw, dawn breaks. But does anyone actually think that way, that he could come very quickly? Does anyone go through every day and wondering at the morning, wondering in the lunch time, wondering in night time, or wondering right before the sleep, and thinking of someone long gone, my return? What kind of person is like that? Yes, there is. Who are they? People who are in love will do that. Life in this world is actually not very pleasant. I'm telling you, I got COVID-19 as soon as I got that, and I feel not only distanced from the other people, but from, among, from my family members too. But in this time, we are not discouraged. Why? Because the love of God is overwhelming us. For we are not ashamed of this promise about Christ coming again. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Christ's love toward us. I am not ashamed of that. Because of that love, it doesn't matter. It is right now happening. That's good. It is happening very long, 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 long time later. You can still wait. Because I know God's love poured out upon us through Christ our Lord and Savior. The season of Advent invites us to wait for the hope of His second coming. Waiting can be hard. Waiting can cause disillusionment. Waiting can be difficult. Still, we are called to actively wait. Not just wait, but wait with anticipation. We may not know what is to come, 
But one thing we know is who is to come. Did you hear that? We may not know what is come, but we know who will come. We wait because we know Jesus loves us first. Let's move forward, Presbyterian Church people, my friend, my church family. Let's wait because you are full of love in Christ our Lord and Savior. With this love, even though our church closed it up, a pandemic spread out, you guys get together and risk yourself to hand out a Thanksgiving meal, not only to the town people, but to me. So you guys are doing what Jesus promised to do. And you guys have that full of Christ's love in you. And you know how to wait because you have a full of Christ's love in you. The Lord bless you. And God loves you. And Jesus loves you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this first Sunday of Advent. We still have hope while we have this pandemic is overwhelm us and hit us great. We still wait even though we don't know when you will come because we know that you love us and that love avail us to wait for your second coming because you're the one that love us first. Thank you, Lord, and for your blessing upon all the fa church families and help us to remain in this love and waiting is worthwhile because this is the power to save us. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we we'll pray. Amen. By the grace of God, we are who we are. And God's grace toward us has not been in vain. In gratitude for all God has done for us in Jesus Christ, let us give back to God, not through our tithe and offering. You can give online with our website, or you can write a check and send it to the church. Now let us pray. God, your promise is eternal. Your unchanging lives spans the ages. We come with our gift to be modeled in the accordance with your purposes, Lord. We offer ourselves to the shape by your will. Make all that we do an outpouring of your goodness and spreading your compassion on the afflicted and care to all who may be in need. All these things in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. West Milford Church family, we are waiting because we know what is ahead of us. We are waiting because the Christ love overwhelms us. We are waiting because Christ love us first. As we go into this world and let other people know that we are waiting because God save us through this wonderful love of Christ. God pour out his love toward Jesus Christ. So we sing, O come, O come, let us adore thee. We come to God and we are waiting. 
as you go into this world, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord bless you. And the Lord turn his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.